name is Dr. Lisa Samaritano. I'm a rheumatologist at the Hospital for Special Surgery, and I am here today to talk to you about the new ACR, Lupus Treatment Guideline. The initial guideline was published in 1999, so I think that in and of itself is a reason to update it. It's been a long time, but there are very important things that have changed over the years. We have new medications for lupus uh, that we had not had for many years, uh, including mycophenolate, which we sort of have repurposed from the transplant uh, population. And we also have brand new medications designed for lupus, such as the biologics bulimumab and anafrolumab. In addition to having more medicines to work with, I think over the years, we've gained a better understanding of how to use our medicines. You know, we have three big groups, I guess, anti-malarials, glucocorticoids, and then immunosuppressives. And one of the focuses of this new guideline is to emphasize how to best utilize each of those groups of medicines to make it uh, more likely that patients will respond quickly and also to minimize drug toxicity. recommendations are really the strong recommendations in the guideline. And there are three of those. The first is using hydroxychloroquine, the anti-malarial, uh, universally, unless a patient has contraindications to its use. The reason for that is that we have very good evidence to support uh, a protective effect of hydroxychloroquine in minimizing risk of flare and preventing disease progression. The second important recommendation is to minimize glucocorticoid use to a dose of prednisone five milligrams or less per day at six months of treatment. The reason for that recommendation, I think, is clear to all rheumatologists. We are so aware of the long-term effects of glucocorticoids. Um, and in addition, we even suggest lowering the dose to below five milligrams or even zero if that's possible, uh, because even low doses of glucocorticoids have long-term effects. And then the last recommendation is to emphasize the earlier use of immunosuppressives, and that includes biologic medicines as well as conventional medicine. These guidelines will support clinicians in their treatment of lupus patients in that they will offer a uh, composite of the available evidence, the uh, clinical practices and preferences of experts in lupus, as well as the thoughts on various medications that we elicited from our patient panel. So I think those three components were the important components in forming these recommendations. I think that it will support tapering steroids, earlier use of immunosuppressives, and give clinicians a level of confidence in doing so. Um, even though there are obviously going to be different clinical nuances for each patient, we hope that this will be accepted as a standard so that perhaps for clinicians trying to get approvals for certain medications for their patients, they might be able to refer to this um, to support its use as part of a, a practice guideline. And I, I think overall, um, it is very difficult, especially for clinicians who are not seeing lupus patients all the time, to really have the time to research each of these various situations. And so we've tried to compile the most common or most serious clinical scenarios and provide guidance for those. I think it will be useful. <music>